Each summer, prior to the start of the school year, the district's administrative leadership team comes together for a two-day retreat. Administrators typically use this time together to discuss district-wide initiatives and plan for the coming school year. This year, day one of the retreat looked a bit different. As a result of the work of the city, county, and school district collaborative, and the priorities identified by the Family and Youth Services Subcommittee, a community-wide summit was held to discuss the growing needs of youth in the La Crosse community. We are in an age of sh shrinking resources, and so we really need to work together. That uh, um, it's not just you know saving money either. It really is about you know having better outcomes. We seem to spend an awful lot of money downstream with these kids and that the whole idea is to really work with these kids um, you know as they're growing up before they get to high school to me that's where we really need to concentrate is how do we improve these kids lives you know whether it's preschool grade school so by the time they get to middle school they're really on a, a better track more than 100 people representing over 30 youth and family service agencies participated in the day-long meeting when we're talking about barriers to learning, we recognize that there's a lot of good organizations and a lot of good people trying to do right by kids in our community. Having said that, we also recognize that there's overlapping services and probably, if we're to be honest, some gaps in services. Officials from each of the three sponsoring agencies, the City of La Crosse, La Crosse County, and the School District of La Crosse, kicked off the day with opening remarks. People rely on us. And this type of work is more ambitious than most any collaboration that I've seen in my 25 years in this business. Each shared statistics and examples of why the day was important from their agency's perspective. We have some of the highest uh, persons and families living below the poverty level. We know that we have children and families in India. And we also know with our resource challenges, we can no longer afford uh, to work within our individual silos. Director of La Crosse County Human Services, Jason Witt. Our hope was what could come out of it is that we could enhance in terms of how the school, how the city and how the county is working together to help kids. To really in this era where resources are, are more tight, we can use what we have in a, in a more targeted way. We're communicating well and we're all working towards the same goal in terms of helping kids making sure they complete their education. Perhaps most touching was the personal story of one young woman's journey through the human services system. I have unfortunately been involved in social services since I was six months old. We moved to Winona, where I was again in foster care when I was four years old for being left alone in the motel room. The manager noticed that my mother came on in with a little girl, but didn't leave with a little girl. <clears throat> I just recently found out that one of my placements in Winona County was the result of my mother choosing to take the rap for a crime her boyfriend committed. She knew that this meant I was going to foster care, but she decided that that was more important than, than her boyfriend getting sent back to prison. She shared what it was like for her siblings and herself as they were bounced around through the foster care system and in and out of multiple school districts. With every new social worker, they have they implemented a new plan. This had a huge impact on my emotions because it was hard to fit into a new family while trying to make new friends at the same time. With school being moved, it was very confusing because school districts aren't always at the same level at the same time. So I'd be put into a school and have to relearn what I had already learned, or worse, I would be thrown into the middle of a subject that I hadn't learned yet. Her message was important for those in attendance. I was faced with so many obstacles and reasons that I could have turned into excuses just to give up, but I didn't. The main reason I kept going forward at full speed and strength was because of my brother and sister. I wanted to be the one person they could look at as being a good influence and a good role model. That's why I'm so happy and grateful and thankful to all of you for wanting to make a difference and how the system can better work together for the children who have so much more to worry about. Thank you for not only caring, but for being here and wanting to take action and make a difference.
she talked about some of the things that are working and some that, that, that weren't and uh, some of the uh, issues that, that she had with uh, different counselors that she had all trying to help but, but sometimes there were, were too many of them trying to work with this young lady at once and sometimes even at, at cross purposes. The day was facilitated by University of Wisconsin Extension Community Resource Educator Carl Green. There was a lot of uh, good uh, cross-communication between the different uh, uh, people that attended. And I think that was one of the main things that we were really looking at, is to get the um, uh, various organizations that don't every day interact with each other to interact. Green led the group through a series of exercises where they discussed the barriers the youth they serve have to learning and how the many agencies in our community provide support for those challenges. Each topic a group identified was placed on a sticky note, and within a short time, sticky notes decorated large portions of the room's walls. So some of the really strong themes that came out uh, were mental health, uh, came out uh, in multiple categories, uh, poverty, lack of resources. Green then facilitated a large group discussion where participants shared their table's thoughts and ideas. It seems like things have to get to an extreme level or a crisis level before we can get some services. And I know that happens in school. A lot of times families feel like that happens with special education. And I think school feels that it happens a lot with counties, different programs in the county, that it has to get so bad before we can get help. We saw an unawareness of needs of other agencies and how those systems operate. And actually just an awareness of uh, what does the other agency need from us to help that child or that family be more successful. This discussion, as well as the informal conversations that service providers had throughout the day, were extremely valuable. Pam Fagan, Supervisor of Special Education. I saw a group of people that started separately at tables mixed with groups that gradually by the end of the day had branched out and were sitting and having conversations with each other um, who didn't come together. I saw it really break at lunch and things that had started in conversations that were continued over lunch and just a camaraderie that was being developed um, by people that attended. As the day came to an end, organizers shared the next steps in the community's joint venture in addressing barriers to learning. Definitely in the, in the next steps, I think what, what came out of it, we want to understand the, the complex web of resources that we have better. And uh, we need to, to do that, what came out of it is could we have a, a website now that we've had an informal mapping of our system, and that was one part of what the day was about, but can we really put that up in an interactive uh, way? So as uh, individuals that access resources, how can we better understand what's, what's out there? And it, would a website help that as far as having an interactive site to direct us to what we could be most beneficial to helping kids? Seems like the next steps are certainly going to be trying to um, work on both the internal barriers that uh, the different organizations have. Uh, a lot of that focuses around confidentiality um, and externally uh, trying to get so that there's better communication between everyone um, that provides uh, these services. We know in education in the county and the city that students are coming to school not fully present to learn uh, in some cases. Uh, our ability to remove some of those barriers is important so that they can reach their fullest capacity as, as students and as learners. And the energy and the motivation in the room that day, and hopefully it'll carry forward, that momentum will carry forward, will help us get there so that students are achieving uh, to the best of their abilities.